Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so um, so last time uh, we were looking at uh, the uh, classification of Riemann surfaces, uh, which had the upper half plane as the universal covering space. Okay, and uh, if you remember, uh, uh, let me uh, recall we had the following cases. So let me write them down. Uh, uh, X uh, a Riemann surface. with universal cover covering space uh, u so u u is the upper half plane which is a set of all uh, complex numbers z such that imaginary part of z greater than 0. Uh, so, uh, so we have the picture we have the following picture uh, this is x sub univ which is the universal covering space this is u and uh, here is the covering projection and here is x and uh, as you know that if I fix a point uh, z here we, which goes down to a point x here then we have we have an identification of the fundamental group below with the deck transformation group above. So, uh, you get uh, this identification pi 1 capital X comma small x the fundamental group of capital X based at small x uh, you have an identification namely an isomorphism of groups with the deck uh, transformation group of this covering. Uh, uh, so, I will is a deck transformation group of this covering map. So, I will just put the covering map, I will just write it as p for convenience, I will not write the whole uh, the source of the target, okay. And uh, this is a subgroup of uh, the automorphic uh, holomorphisms of the uh, universal covering space U, which as you know is uh, identified with uh, PSL uh, 2R. So, these are Mobius transformations for the form z going to a z plus b by c z plus d uh, with a b c d real numbers real entries okay and a, a d minus b c uh, equal to 1 right. So, um, now uh, there were 3 cases. So, of course, uh, case 1 was uh, the trivial case uh, x simply connected. if x is simply connected then <coughs> uh, uh, the fundamental group is trivial and uh, uh, x to x to x the identity map itself is a universal covering therefore by uniqueness of the universal covering uh, x has to be isomorphic to u itself okay. Uh, then pi 1 x comma x is 0 x is isomorphic u this is this isomorphism is holomorphic isomorphism is by holomorphic to u. Case 2 was uh, x uh, uh, so uh, we we had 2 possible cases okay uh, apart from case 1 that is we found that when the, the fundamental group uh, if it is non not trivial then it is an infinite cyclic group okay. And there are and there were two cases, namely uh, it consists con consisted of only parabolic transformations, okay, and the other one, uh, the other case was that it consisted only of uh, hyperbolic transformations, okay. So uh, pi one, uh, so the second case is when deck transformation group. So the point is that this is this is isomorphic to Z, okay, uh, or uh, 
uh, uh, 0 okay the, fun, the fundamental group has to be either z or 0 okay that is what we proved last time and uh, uh, so if the deck transformation group uh, uh, consists of uh, of uh, um, uh, parabolic transformations uh, parabolic elements mind you these are uh, these are Mobius transformations that fix the that that are uh, automorphisms of u so they are Mobius transformations in here and uh, they have only one fixed point in the whole uh, uh, extended complex plane right. So, uh, uh, in, so in this case what we found was that uh, uh, the, the universal covering x sub unif to which is u to x p uh, can be identified uh, uh, with uh, u to uh, delta star okay uh, so there is an identification like this so there is, there is a biholomorphic map like this there is a biholomorphic map like this and uh, this map is just given by uh, z going to uh, uh, e power 2 pi i uh, e power 2 pi i z So this is the uh, uh, this is what you get uh, if the deck transformation group contains only uh, parabolic elements, and uh, of course if once you identify the universal covering with this, then uh, the uh, uh, the deck transformation group of this covering is the subgroup of uh, uh, is is identified with the subgroup of. Uh, uh, translations by uh, a single non zero complex number okay which in this case we have taken as one right so uh, you can see that uh, uh, the this is this delta star is just u modulo z okay it is delta star is just u modulo z and and of course uh, uh, z is a fundamental group of delta star is isomorphic to the fundamental group of z delta star okay so we saw this case then we uh, looked at the other case when uh, 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 the deck transformation group consisted only of hyperbolic elements okay. So deck P uh, consists uh, of uh, only uh, hyperbolic elements so uh, there is there is an assumption that I have forgotten to say um, um, of course I am assuming uh, one more important thing uh, that I must recall I am assuming that the fundamental group of x is abelian okay. So uh, I should also write that somewhere here uh, assume so let me write this here assume pi 1 x comma x is abelian this is a very very important assumption. It is it is only because of this assumption that uh, you get these two distinct cases, because uh, you because you know that a parabolic element cannot uh, commute with a hyperbolic element. So the moment one element is parabolic, and the deck transformation group is commutative, uh, because it's isomorphic to the fundamental group, then every other element has to be parabolic. And the moment uh, the deck transformation contains uh, group contains one hyperbolic element, uh, again. Uh, all other elements commute with this hyperbolic element will force that all other elements are also hyperbolic. So the important thing is you get these two distinct cases because you have assumed pi 1 is abelian okay. And uh, in this case uh, uh, what happens so in this case it was a uh, there was something that uh, uh, one needs to check which I will try to do in this uh, lecture. So you see you have uh, uh, the the transformation group so you know you can identify x with uh, delta sub r okay so uh, you can identify the whole uh, this whole covering map uh, uh, with the, the following map okay and what is this following map so let me write this uh, so you know um, maybe i use uh, 
uh, okay. so let me not use uh, so so let me let me tell you what delta r is delta r is the annulus open annulus with outer radius 1 inner radius uh, small r where small r is a real fraction okay so delta r is the set of all z in c such that r is strictly less than mod z strictly less than 1 and this is for uh, r in uh, 0 1 the open unit interval in r real numbers okay delta r is this annulus all right and uh, you see the the map here is z going to uh, so let me write out the formula um, it is z going to uh, e power uh, um, let me check for a minute uh, so it is z going to e power 2 pi i e power uh, 2 pi i log z by log lambda okay uh, this is the uh, this is the universal covering map where uh, what is this lambda see the uh, uh, so this uh, the deck transformation group the deck transformation group of uh, uh, x I mean the deck transformation of group of uh, of the cover um, so let me write uh, delta r uh, and of course I fix a point uh, let us fix a point uh, uh, say x okay in delta r right the deck transformation group turns out to be exactly the infinite cyclic group generated by a single hyperbolic transformation okay and that is given by z going to lambda z okay where lambda is greater than 1 lambda is a real number right. So this is how we had the deck transformation group it was just um, well so let me write this this is the set of all uh, sigma power n uh, where n is a integer and uh, sigma power n is just sigma composed with itself n times okay and of course sigma power 0 is uh, uh, to be taken as identity and sigma of z is just lambda z lambda times z this is multiplication by lambda where lambda is uh, lambda is real lambda greater than 1 and this lambda is related to this to this r in the following uh, in the following way lambda is just uh, e power so there is a formula for lambda it is e power minus 2 pi squared by log r okay uh, there of course I mean ln r okay uh, natural logarithm right and of course this it this this key thing can also be written the other way I can write r equal to e power minus 2 pi squared by log lambda one can write it either way all right it is one and the same right. So uh, this is how the uh, universal covering looks I mean this is how the covering looks uh, if x is uh, uh, a Riemann surface with deck transformation group containing only hyperbolic elements okay and isomorphic to z right and uh, uh, so I was making this remark uh, in the last lecture that you know if uh, you take different r's then the corresponding annuli they are not biholomorphic okay so that is what I would like to explain why okay um, so that is what I would like to do um, um, so so let me do that so what I am going to do is uh, so consider uh, so you have this map consider the map uh, so from from 0 1 which is inside r to well the set of all possible delta of all such delta r okay uh, uh, so maybe I, I write uh, such that uh, r belongs to 0 comma 1 okay uh, this is a set of all these annuli mind you all these annuli are open subsets of the complex plane so they automatically inherit a complex structure making them into Riemann surfaces okay uh, and of course uh, 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 Topologically, the, the fundamental group is just uh, fundamental group is just z. Uh, and uh, what is this map? This is just sending r to delta r. 
okay this is the natural map and uh, well by definition this map is uh, is a bijective map all right uh, this is by definition a bijective map and what i'm now going to do is i'm going to follow this up i'm going to go mod uh, biholomorphic biholomorph biholomorphisms uh, uh, that is uh, holomorphic isomorphisms okay so what i'll get here is i'll get i'll put the square bracket here where this this square bracket of delta r uh, denotes the holomorphic isomorphism class okay so send every delta r to its holomorphic isomorphism class and well uh, you see uh, therefore i get a, i get a map like this okay i get a map like this and uh, the claim that uh, the delta r's are all different for different r is the same as saying that this map is actually bijective okay see this map is see this map is already surjective because this is my this is a bijective map and this is a surjective map okay and uh, therefore the composition is certainly surjective uh, if you say that delta r1 isomorphic to delta r2 implies r1 equal to r2 then you are just saying that uh, this map is uh, also injective okay so uh, so the so the, the the claim the claim is that um, r uh, uh, or rather the theorem theorem is that uh, uh, delta r delta r1 uh, biholomorphic to delta r2 uh, implies R one equal to R two. Okay. In other words, R going to biholomorphic, that is holomorphic isomorphism class of delta R, is bijective. Okay. So this is the claim, right? So uh, we, we can prove this by using uh, uh, our technique of. Uh, uh, using covering spaces okay so uh, um, uh, as follows um so what we'll do is uh, so let so let me draw let me draw another diagram so what we'll do is uh, uh, let me start with i'll start with an isomorphism holomorphic isomorphism delta r1 to delta r2 and i'll prove that r1 equal to r2 right i'll do that okay so um, <coughs> so proof is uh, start with with uh, a biholomorphic uh, map phi from delta r1 to delta r2 okay start with the biholomorphic okay we will have to prove that r1 uh, so it's a it's a bijective by holomorphic it's a bijective holomorphic map injective holomorphic map which is also surjective so the inverse is also holomorphic it's a holomorphic isomorphism and i'll have to deduce from this that r1 equal to r2 okay and how does one do how does one do that so <coughs> so let me draw this let me draw this uh, this kind of diagram so i have <coughs> so you see i have u okay which is a universal covering i have uh, let me call this as p1 covering projection for uh, delta sub r1 okay and uh, on the other hand i also have u uh, i have p2 which is a covering projection for delta r2 all right and i have this isomorphism which is phi okay now compose uh, so what i'll do is let me fix a point z1 in u all right and let's assume that z1 goes to uh, uh, say x x1 here and uh, let's uh, let me take uh, let phi take x1 to x2 okay so phi will take x1 to x2 which is a point here all right and uh, i fix a point z2 in u which goes to x2 okay so you look at the order of things that i'm doing uh, the order in which i'm doing this uh, you know the reason i'm doing this is because uh, i need to identify the fundamental group below with deck transformations above okay and so i have to fix a point below okay and uh, uh, 
So if I fix a point here, I get a point there, okay, and I had to fix points above, which go to these points. Okay, um, of course I do have some freedom in choosing these points because there could be more. There could be more than one choice. There are more than there is more than one choice for this. There is more than one choice for this. But let's take, let's fix one choice here and one choice there. All right. Now what is go, what is going to happen at the level of fundamental groups? So you see, uh, the first fundamental group of uh, delta R one. Uh, based that uh, x1 you see that is going to be identified uh, via uh, via this map p1 uh, so let me write that via p1 uh, because of this covering p1 with the deck transformation group of p1 okay and uh, the deck transformation group of p1 is uh, well uh, is sitting inside the uh, holomorphic automorphisms of u right so uh, this is what you get this is the diagram that you get corresponding to this cover all right then you also have uh, a similar diagram for this uh, from the first fundamental group of delta r2 based at x2 to uh, you have you have an isomorphism group isomorphism because of the covering p2 Okay, and uh, this is uh, uh, going to identify the deck transformation group with uh, the deck. Uh, this is going to identify the fundamental group below with the deck transformation group of P two, which is again uh, uh, holomorphic automorphism. I mean subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms of you, all right? And uh, well, uh, what is uh, uh, notice? Uh, I, I mean, going by what I've given here. Okay, the uh, you see the deck transformation group, the deck transformation group uh, of P one is just given by sigma one power n, where n is an integer, and where uh, well sigma one of z is lambda one of z. Okay, all right, and uh, uh, lambda one is uh, real. Lambda one is greater than one. And of course, uh, R one is related to lambda one by this formula. So lambda one is e to the minus two pi squared by log R one. Okay. Okay. Right. And similarly, I have the deck formula for the deck transformation group of P two. It is going to be generated by sigma two. So it is. All possible uh, uh, compositions of sigma two with itself uh, in sigma two to the n, uh, where sigma two of z is lambda two times z. Uh, lambda two again in R, lambda two greater than one, and lambda two given by e to the minus two pi squared by log R two. So this is what we get uh, for corresponding to these two covers, right? Now, what you must notice is that if I take if I take this uh, covering map and follow it by this isomorphism, I get another map like this. Okay, and what is this map? It is P1. It's P1. Uh, so let me write it here. It's P1 followed by phi. Okay, and this diagram commutes. And this continues to be a covering map. This is still a covering map. This is still a covering map because this is just uh, this is a biholomorphic uh, uh, holomorphic isomorphism, and this is a covering map. Okay, so the composition is still a covering map. All right, and uh, now because of this covering, what is going to happen is that the fundamental group of delta R two, delta sub R two, based at x two. Is going to get identified uh, as a subgroup of or holomorphic automorphisms of this U, okay? Namely, uh, it's going to get identified with uh, the deck transformation group of this cover, okay? So I'll have I'll have one more. Uh, uh, so I'll I'll have also uh, something like this. I'll have I'll have an isomorphism here identification here. Now this identification is because of this covering phi circle P one. 
So, this is via phi circle P 1 okay. and this will identify this with the deck transformation group of phi circle P 1 which is also going to be a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms of you okay. So, uh, uh, you have to keep so the the way the deck the way the fundamental group is identified with the deck transformation group depends on the covering okay. So, this this covering for this covering you have an identification of this fundamental group with uh, the deck transformation group of this covering which is uh, which is uh, uh, which is a subgroup of holomorphic automorphisms of you okay. The point is that these two are subgroups of the same uh, you, you, these these two are being considered as subgroups here right. Uh, so, uh, the first thing I want to make uh, the statement I want to make is you see that is a uh, uh, you know co covering maps have a uh, unique lifting property okay. So, you see I have this map phi circle P 1 that is a map from u to this okay. So, I can lift this to a map like this. So, I will get a map I, there exists a unique lift which I call it as phi circle P 1 tilde okay that is this phi circle P 1 tilde is the lift of this map to you okay and of course, it is a lift. So, this diagram commutes all right and uh, this uh, this lift will be an isomorphism okay this lift will be an isomorphism that is uh, that is that is quite easy to verify okay this lift will be an isomorphism in fact you can check that uh, uh, it, it it will be a holomorphic lift okay and it will be injective okay. So, phi circle P 1 tilde will be uh, a holomorphic isomorphism from u to u okay and and since it is a holomorphic isomorphism from u to u it is going to be a uh, you know it is going to be a Mobius transformation it is going to be a Mobius transformation it is it is an element of or ot u okay the holomorph and uh, 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 holomorphic automorphism of u I will call this as b let me call this Mobius transformation as b okay. Now, uh, you see let us look at uh, let us look at uh, uh, let us look at only this part of the diagram okay let us look at only this part of the diagram and uh, write again let us again analyze this of course, you know I could have uh, uh, anyway. So, let me re rewrite it. So, I have the following thing I have I have pi 1 uh, delta r 2 base at x 2 and uh, that is uh, um, so, I have this isomorphism uh, this identification uh, this is via uh, phi circle p 1 it is identified with the deck transformation group of uh, uh, phi circle p 1 all right and uh, well I also have the uh, another uh, identification this is via P 2 uh, it is identified with the deck transformation group of P 2 well and both of them are sitting inside uh, uh, so the uh, holomorphic automorphisms here and then see this uh, this uh, commutativity of this diagram okay the commutativity of this diagram what it tells you is that you know if you give me uh, a, a deck transformation here if you give me a deck transformation of this cover how do I produce a deck transformation of this cover it is just by conjugating by B okay namely if you give me a deck transformation of this covering okay then so it is it is a it is a, it is a uh, it is an automorphism of U which respects the it which respects the fibers all right and how do I get given an automorphism of u which respects these fibers okay how do I get an automorphism of u which respects this these fibers what I do is I apply b inverse I apply that automorphism then I apply b that is how I get uh, an automorphism uh, of this covering from an automorphism of this covering. So, all I am trying to say is that there is a map like this which is an isomorphism okay and this map is simply give me any deck transformation 
for this cover you get a deck transformation of this cover simply by conjugating by b okay. So, you have a map a so this map is just a going to b a b inverse okay. So, so in other words what I am what I am trying to say is that I am just saying that uh, and and and, uh, and this diagram of course commutes okay this diagram of course commutes and this is just the statement that you know if you change a covering by an isomorphism by an isomorphic covering then the deck transformation group will change by a conjugate in the group of holomorphic automorphisms of the uh, the the universal cover all right. So, what this tells you is that it tells you that b dot deck uh, phi circle p 1 dot b inverse which is the image of this is actually deck uh, p 2 that is what it says okay you get this. But uh, what I want to say is I just want to say that this is exactly the same as the deck transformation group of p 1 okay. So, so the claim is is LHS above is exactly the same as the deck transformation group of p 1. And why is uh, why is that so? That's be, that's because of the way the identification of the, of the deck trans, uh, of the fundamental group is is because of the way uh, the way you identify the fundamental group with the deck uh, the deck transformation group. So let me explain that. See, I guess I should put uh, 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 in fact I should I, sh I should put b dot this dot b inverse, and my claim is uh, uh, in fact actually the claim is that this group deck P circle P1 is the same as deck P1. Okay, I mean the, the so what I'm just saying is that the deck transformation group of uh, uh, this cover and of this cover are the same. Okay, I'm saying the deck transformations group are the both. I'm saying these two <coughs> these two are equal actually. These two are equal here. Okay. So uh, how does one do that? So if let us try to recall the way we got the deck transformation. So, uh, what we did was you see uh, I have uh, 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 see I had this point I have this point x 1. Uh, so, this is the point x 1 and uh, here is the point z 1 above all right and uh, what was the what was the uh, map from the first fundamental group of uh, delta delta sub r 1 based at x 1 to uh, deck uh, deck transformation of p1 what is this map so you see this is uh, this is a map p1 all right and what was the what was the uh, what was this map so you see i took a uh, homotopy class of a loop alpha bay starting and, and at and ending at x1 okay so i took something like this okay and then what i did was i took its so this is alpha i took its unique lift above I got a unique lift alpha tilde because of the unique lifting property and that gave me a new point here. That point also lied was a point lying over x 1. So, I got a new point alpha tilde of 1 okay and it was the, the deck transformation that this alpha defined was a unique deck transformation that takes z 1 to alpha tilde of 1 that is how it was defined and that is 1 and only 1 okay. So, so this is just the unique deck transformation that sends uh, z 1 to uh, alpha tilde of 1 alpha tilde being the unit unique lift of alpha okay. Now in the same way how do you uh, how do you get uh, an identification of uh, 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 pi 1 of this with uh, the deck transformation group there okay. So, let me write that down pi 2 pi 1 of delta r 2 comma x 2 okay to the deck transformation group of uh, uh, phi circle p 1 okay. How was this done? This was done in the following way namely what you did was well 
you had uh, uh, you had x 2 a point in delta r 2 all right and then you had this point uh, uh, z 1 and z 1 is being mapped to x 2 by uh, by this uh, by phi circle p 1 because p 1 takes z 1 to x 1 and then phi takes x 1 to x 2 all right and what what did we do well uh, this is the, the map here is defined by well you send beta to the unique deck transformation that uh, uh, that that sends uh, z uh, z 1 to uh, beta tilde of 1. So, namely what you did was you took a beta here uh, homotopy class and then you uh, uh, well lifted it uh, uh, to a beta tilde. So, it is a little cramped let me try to draw a slightly better diagram. So, uh, so here is uh, z 1 and I had this uh, beta tilde which is the li lift unique lift of beta starting at z 1 for this map for the covering phi circle p 1 okay. and this ended at a point this point is also going to lie over x 2 for this cover okay. and uh, this point is beta tilde of 1 and the deck transformation you are getting uh, the automorphism of the upper half plane you are getting is the one that is is the unique one that sends z 1 to beta of tilde of 1 okay. Now notice that you know uh, uh, note that that if phi of alpha is beta okay namely I uh, will I will put in this diagram here. Uh, so, there is also uh, there is also x 1 here and uh, there is also alpha here. Suppose alpha goes to beta under phi under the isomorphism phi okay then it is very clear that uh, uh, the lift uh, the lift alpha alpha of the lift alpha tilde of alpha under this map which is uh, which is p 1 okay is the same as beta uh, beta tilde which is the lifting under this map. After all uh, 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 well alpha tilde is the lift of this okay and and therefore it is also a lift of beta all right. So, beta tilde and alpha tilde are one and the same right. So, the moral of the story is that uh, you know the, the image of this inside the holomorphic automorphisms of u which is the deck transformation of the covering p 1 is exactly the same as the image of this uh, uh, in the in the holomorphic automorphisms of u okay. So, so this implies this this implies that you know the deck transformations of uh, uh, the deck transformation of p 1 are the same as the deck transformations of uh, phi circle p 1. The deck transformations as uh, these these two groups are one and the same inside the uh, group of holomorphic automorphisms of u okay. Well, so that 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 proves the claim okay. Now, therefore, you see uh, so, what I can do is uh, in this uh, here I can replace uh, this by deck of p 1. So, finally, what I get is deck p 2 is conjugate of deck p 1 all right by b. So, so uh, deck so b dot deck of uh, p 1 uh, dot b inverse is the same as uh, well deck p 2. these two are one the same. Now you see you take uh, you take this element sigma 2 this is generator of b 2 okay. This has to correspond to an element here okay and that element being here it has to be of the form b 1 sigma uh, uh, sorry b sigma 1 power n b inverse that is how elements here look, look like okay because elements in deck p 1 look like uh, composites of uh, sigma with itself all right. So, but you see this is a this is a group uh, group identification all right 
and the generator has to only go to a generator okay. Therefore, this uh, has to be either sigma 1 or it has to be sigma 1 inverse okay. There are only two possible generators it is an infinite cyclic group isomorphic to z there are only two possible generators. So, so th this is so this has to be sigma 1 uh, or sigma 1 inverse okay. So, the moral of the story is that the upshot of all all this is that either sigma 2 is equal to sigma 1 or sigma 2 is equal to sigma 1 inverse okay that is what you get. Now, what does that lead to? Uh, so, let me uh, um, let me write here um, okay I think I can drop off this uh, and continue. So, well I will get so you see I will get uh, so, so sigma 1 or sigma 1 inverse is sigma 2 this is what I get all right and uh, well um, mm, I think I should be a little careful I should either say uh, I should put I should conjugate by b yeah. I should be careful b sigma 1 b inverse or not exactly sigma 1 but or b sigma 1 inverse b inverse I should be careful because uh, if sigma is a generator of this then b sigma b inverse is a generator of the conjugated group okay. So, uh, so let me make that correction um, so, so sigma 2 is either b uh, sigma 1 b inverse or sigma 2 is uh, b sigma 1 inverse b inverse. Now, what is uh, now what is sigma 1? See, sigma 1, if I write it as a matrix, all right, it is uh, sigma 1 of z is lambda 1 z, so it will be root lambda 1 0 0 1 by root lambda 1, okay. So, this is what sigma 1 is, okay. Sigma 1, uh, sigma uh, 1 inverse is going to be well uh, 1 by root lambda 1 0 0 root lambda 1. This this is how I write. Uh, representatives in SL2 all right and uh, well uh, the same works for 2 also. So, I will just put subscript i ok. Uh, so, I will just put i here ok and now uh, compute trace compute the trace. So, what you will get is trace squared uh, sigma 2 is going to be the trace squared uh, sigma 1 or it is going to be trace squared uh, sigma 1 inverse okay depending on whether it is equal to this or that because you know under conjugation trace is not going to change. If you write this so if you write this down what you will get is you will get uh, if you take both cases you will simply get lambda 1 lambda 2 plus 1 by lambda 2 plus 2 is equal to lambda 1 plus 1 by lambda 1 plus 2 okay and uh, if you solve this all right what you will get is well you are going to get uh, lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 because uh, both lambda 1 and lambda 2 are greater than 1 okay. So, what you will get is well lambda uh, so this will imply <coughs> lambda 1 uh, is equal to lambda 2 as uh, lambda 1 comma lambda 2 are both greater than 1 this is what you will get and if lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 you will get r 1 is equal to r 2 because uh, r 1 is just e power minus 2 pi squared by log lambda 1 which is equal to uh, e power minus 2 pi square by log lambda 2 which is equal to r 2 okay. So, uh, thus we get that uh, the the inner uh, radii of these annuli are one and the same okay and uh, the beauty is to uh, see that we have applied uh, diligently covering space theory to prove this okay. So, so this implies r 1 equal to so, so I should say uh, delta R1 isomorphic to delta R2 imply if and only if. So, I will put so R1 equal to R2. Okay. So, this clearly tells you why two uh, annuli with different R's they are not going to be biholomorphic to one another. Okay. So, so, I think that clarifies 
to, to, to some extent the remarks I made towards the end of the last lecture okay. So we will stop here.